This tablet resource app is your essential guide to the Asus Transformer family. It brings together over 100 videos produced by VGJ Felix on everything to do with the Android tablet from hints and tips to the best apps to download. The app has several options along the bottom of the screen, the main one being a feed to the latest videos that have been uploaded. Videos are uploaded on a near daily basis and all you need to do is tap on the play button. This will automatically launch a YouTube app and play the video. Once you have finished watching your video, you can use the back button to return to the application. The next feature is the archive section, where videos are divided into useful categories, such as the best apps to download for the transformer and basics videos that provide a wealth of tips and tutorials. There's also a Facebook page about the videos as well as a Twitter feed and contact methods. This application works just as well on smartphones and the app will send notifications to your device when new videos are uploaded to the channel. Of course, this app is absolutely free and there are no adverts. For more information, visit any of the links at the end of this video. And thanks very much for watching. There are a thousand and one incarnations of Buster Move, Puzzle Bobble, Bubble Shoot or whatever it was originally called, but I have found this one made by Runner Games to be the most competent. If you've never played it before, here are the very basics. You fire a variety of different coloured bubbles from the bottom of the screen towards bubbles that are hanging from the top of the screen. If you connect three of the same colour together, they disappear as I am ably demonstrating here. The aim is to clear all the bubbles before they reach the bottom of the screen because after every seven bubbles you fire, the hanging bubbles are lowered from the top of the screen. Experience will teach you to clear routes to the bubbles towards the top of the screen and remove them which will cause all the ones hanging off it to disappear. Bubble Shoot is very easy to learn, very fun to play and this game has translated very well to touch screens as it allows you to fire bubbles with pinpoint accuracy. Now onto the reasons why I like this particular version of the game. First of all it's free which always helps but this version of the game has two modes. Puzzle mode which I showed you earlier and this arcade mode where the bubbles are always falling towards you. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of levels which you have to complete as best as possible in order to earn stars and unlock new levels. The best thing of all however is the music. Just listen to it, I absolutely love it and I can't stop humming this tune in my head. But, just in case you don't like the music, you can switch it off. <laughs> Bubble Shoot by Runner Games is definitely the definitive version and it works great on tablets. Zombie games tend to get an easy ride in the gaming world for some reason. They're always popular and Dead Trigger is no different. It's got so much press that I was intrigued enough to purchase it and find out what all the fuss is about. As you can see, it's a first person shooter in which you control your character using the left thumb to move and the right thumb to aim, shoot and reload. To be honest, the controls are a little tricky and first person shooters don't really lend themselves too well to the touch screen environment. But the mechanics are fairly solid and the graphics are quite remarkable, especially with the Tegra 3 enhanced effects. The Transformer tablet also separates itself from the crowd by having a USB port so you can plug a controller in. Now the game feels much more responsive and entertaining, but after all, shooting zombies has always been entertaining. Each level lasts for around 2 or 3 minutes and revolves around one of the following themes. Kill zombies, survive zombies, collect stuff to kill zombies and protect stuff from zombies. And while we're at it, why don't we go hardcore and use a HDMI slot to effectively turn Dead Trigger into a proper console game. The only problem is it's too simple to be a console game and have any longevity. But on the other hand, this is a very cheap game. But on the other third hand, you'll have to do a lot of in-app purchasing, using real money to buy better weapons and progress in the game. This has irritated many gamers, including myself. So, in summary, this is a fun game, boosted by the Transformers technical abilities, but it's not an ideal tablet game. This app could very well revolutionise the way you navigate around your Android touchscreen device. It harmonises simplicity with a jolly good idea. Switch from one application to another from anywhere with one finger gesture. Now that is cool. The concept revolves around swiping your finger from off the screen into an active zone that triggers the application. You can completely customise this active zone, which is indicated here as a red border. Right now I am switching on more active zones which will mean that if I swipe in from that border 
swipe pad will activate and I can choose an application to switch to. So what I've done now is turn on active zones on the whole of the left and right of the screen. Now, when I draw my finger in from either side, swipe pad will offer me 12 apps or browser bookmarks to switch to. Now, of course, this setup is a little impractical as swipe pad would be firing off all the time and it would interfere with other apps such as Dolphin Browser. So I tend to leave the active zone to just one corner of the screen. But it works really well because you instinctively learn to go to that part of the screen when you want to switch to other applications. Setting up swipe pad is really intuitive too. You swipe to a box and let go while it's blue to launch the box or let it change orange and then let go to change the application or bookmark. For a few extra pennies you can buy more slots and extra features but crucially the base application is free and that makes swipe pad an essential addition to your tablet. While we continue to wait for Google themselves to construct a tablet app market environment, which I'm starting to think will never happen, we have to make do with third party offerings and the latest of these is the revamped Tablified Market app. In essence, Tablified Market is a database of tablet optimized Android apps. It offers a similar range of categories as Google Play, from news to widgets, sports to productivity. The idea behind the app is familiarity, so if you know how to use Google Play, you'll find Tablified an easy, intuitive experience. Once you've found an app that interests you, simply press the install button to launch you into Google Play, where you actually download the app. That does mean that Tablified is nothing more than a middleman, a conduit to the apps you're looking for, but it's reassuring to know that you are ending up in the safest and most secure environment for downloading Android apps. Now, Tablified is a vast improvement over its previous incarnation, but it does still suffer from some speed issues, and some of the buttons and text are far too small for a tablet app. You can pay for a pro version, which lets you change some of these settings, but should we really have to pay for something that Google should have resolved over a year ago when tablet apps first came out? So, in summary, it can't do you any harm to try Tablified and see if it can point you in the right direction. Battery Reborn is brilliant in its style, features and cool stuff. It's currently free as a beta app in the marketplace, so try it out for free while you can. The application itself consists of four main screens. The first being a large, simple but cool looking battery meter. The second screen displays interesting information about your battery, such as the discharge rate, how long your battery is likely to last and how long it takes to recharge. The third screen, which I'll show you in a moment, controls the fantastic home screen functions. First of all, you have a neat looking widget, but perhaps more impressive is the battery breakdown display that sits in your notifications tray. It displays key information and enables you to switch off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is a fantastic additional feature. As I've said, the options for this are controlled in the third screen of the application, while the fourth screen includes setup options to put your tablet into flight mode during the night time to save even more power. In summary, Battery Widget Reborn is the complete battery app package. I showed you in a previous video how to get Flash working on the Nexus 7, and this app called Flashify enhances the accessibility with an ingenious idea. Let's say that Chrome is your browser of choice, but you want to watch a Flash video that, as we know, Chrome doesn't support. You will need to use an alternative browser such as Firefox. Well, this app makes the transition seamless. Simply find the web page in your normal browser and then press the share option. Choose Flashify, which then gives you the option to choose an alternative browser that loads at the same web page, which will then let you play the Flash you want to use. In this example, I'm loading up Firefox, which then presents me with the option to play Flash and the video appears. The atmosphere in Lee Valley is absolutely electric. Tim Bailey and Etienne Stock looking for the last day of slalom canoeing, the last section. This is one of those brilliant, simple apps that has no drawbacks and is completely free. Screen rotation is a bit of a grey area on the Nexus 7, so here are the basics. You can turn on screen rotation in most applications, such as web browsers, that will rotate in any direction. However, your home screens do not rotate from portrait mode, and there is no out-of-the-box solution. Some apps will also ignore screen rotation and stay locked in portrait mode, such as the BBC app. 
As always, though, there is a solution, and it comes in the form of Ultimate Rotation Control, an application that overrides screen rotation defaults and puts them in your control. Once you enable the app, it forces the screen to rotate no matter what screen or application you are in. An icon in the notifications tray will appear when the app is active, so start rotating and see what happens. As you can see here, the home screen works great and it puts the Google search and icon dock in perfect places on opposite ends of the screen. The BBC app also rotates too, but be aware that this app is not rotating to its tablet optimised version, which would include articles and news stories on the same screen. There are a few options in the notifications tray that let you change the settings of Ultimate Rotation Control to Normal, Forced or Locked Rotation. But as the app suggests, you can take Ultimate Control by selecting individually how each app behaves so that some rotate while others stay fixed. If you're willing to put the time in, you can customise to your heart's content, but switching to a forced mode for all apps is a good place to start. Ultimate Rotation Control is free as a 7 day trial and £1.69 after that, but if you're one of the early Nexus 7 adopters who got the Google Play credit, you should definitely spend a little bit of it on this. The on-screen keyboard of a Nexus 7 can cause a bit of a dilemma when typing. In portrait mode, the keys are spaced well enough for you to type with your left and right thumbs without too much discomfort. However, switching to landscape mode makes the keyboard far too big and you'll find your thumbs stretching and crisscrossing each other. So, what do you do? Well, a simple and free solution is to download an alternative typing application called Perfect Keyboard that does a really cool trick and I'll show you that in a minute. First of all, you need to set it up. When you've installed the app, you will need to activate it, so go to Settings and from there go on to Language and Input. Press Default and choose Perfect Keyboard. Now watch as I begin typing in Portrait Mode and then switch the screen to Landscape Mode. The keyboard actually splits itself in two so that the keys are centred around the sides of the screen where my thumbs can easily reach them. It looks odd, but the keys retain their QWERTY keyboard structure, and you tend to ignore the number pad in the middle, so typing remains as intuitive as ever. Perfect Keyboard has a great level of flexibility and customization, so you can change the keyboard to all shapes and sizes. You do this by going to the Perfect Keyboard settings, choosing Layout, and then editing the appropriate orientation. To add this split keyboard mode, all you need to do is select landscape layout and choose split keyboard. And that's it, your keyboard problems should be solved. While Google Play is a default content market provider preloaded onto your Nexus 7, there is nothing stopping you from going elsewhere to get applications. One such place is the Amazon App Store, which has recently been released in territories outside the US. To get this application, you will need to go to the Amazon website and search for the Amazon App Store. Remember that this app is coming from outside Google Play, so you might have to adjust your tablet settings to allow the application to install. See the appropriate video, which is in the description. The application itself is basically another app market, just like Google Play, albeit set out a little differently. The main page provides you with popular apps and all you need to do is press on one to find out more information and download the app. You will need to note that to download any apps and pay for apps, you will need an Amazon account. None of this is tied to your Google account. To be honest, the Amazon App Store isn't that good. There aren't that many apps available and the interface is a little slow and clunky. Google's own marketplace is much better. However, the Amazon App Store is essential for one reason and one reason alone, their free application of the day. Each day, a paid app will be free, so it's worth getting the Amazon App Store just for that reason. So far, I've got Angry Birds, Plants vs Zombies and Quell all for free. And it's not just games either. Occasionally, you will find an office suite or productivity app being offered. It's money for nothing and apps for free, or something like that.